Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back. I'm Mariam. Today, I am doing a review of the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Foundation. Yes, Danessa Myricks now has a foundation and I am here for it because I love Danessa Myricks products and if I wanna see a foundation from any brand, it will 100% be Danessa Myricks. Now, this is what the foundation looks like on my face, freshly applied, pretty flawless, I know, but be sure to watch until the end of the video for that wear test. At this point in the video, I don't yet know how it will wear, so don't take my excitement as a final verdict. Be sure to watch until the end. You've been warned. And now, with that said, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my videos. And now, let's hit it. Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation and also Yummy Skin Glow Serum. Here we come. Alrighty, so first and foremost, I am so, 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 so excited to have a foundation from Danessa Myricks. Not only do I love Danessa as a person, I love her brand. And this is the brand that I want to see a foundation from because Danessa Myricks is such an expert in the field. She's been around for a long time making her mark in the makeup industry. So this is very, very exciting. This morning, I got a PR package and it is so, so cute. In this bag, we have the new Yummy Skin Foundation in four shades, and we also have the Yummy Skin Glow Serum. So now this can be used as a highlighter or as a primer, two universal shade. Main Squeeze is a brightening glow serum, and then Juice Boost is a bronzing glow serum. So this is $34 each, and it's packed with vitamin C, hyaluronic acid and squalane. So good for your skin ingredients, but it's still makeup. Now the foundation, here I have all the shades on the card. This is a skin loving skincare hybrid foundation with medium buildable coverage that effortlessly creates a natural skin like glow. Nourishing formula addresses common skin concerns like discoloration, under eye circles, good for mature skin and acne prone skin. Real coverage for skin that looks like skin. Again, this comes with hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is one of my favorite ingredients, not just for my oily AF skin, but this also works magically for dry skin. It kind of has this incredible ability to adapt to any skin type and really neutralize it, really balance it. So for me, with my oily acne prone skin, it does a great job of controlling my oil, whereas for dry skin, it does a great job of keeping it moisturized and hydrated all day. So we love a good hyaluronic acid moment. Also, it's got some skin loving oils, jojoba seed oil, vegan squalane, maracuja oil. Ooh, maracuja oil is another phenom. We've got turmeric oil, ginger root oil. Hmm, I'm wondering if any of these are comedogenic. I should probably look that up just cause I'm that girl. Great, so jojoba oil is a non-comedogenic oil, it has a comedogenic rating of two, which basically means that it has a moderately low chance of clogging your pores. Wow, so maracuja oil, which is basically passion fruit seed oil, has a comedogenic rating of one slash two, which means that it's even better than jojoba seed oil. All right, while we're at it, let's look up turmeric and ginger root oils. I can't seem to find the actual rating for turmeric oil, but generally I know that turmeric is really good for treating your skin. It's actually a known antiseptic. I doubt it has any sort of pore clogging tendencies. All right, let's look at ginger root oil. Why is this information so difficult to find? I'm like scrolling, 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 scrolling. Okay, I can't find it. So anyway, I'm gonna take their word for it. It says that these are skin loving oils and I believe this to be the case. Anyway, let's quickly go over the shades. So now in the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation, we have 26 shades with several different undertones. We've got pink, gold, neutral, and warm. Like I mentioned before, I got four shades, three of which are neutral, and one of which is a gold undertone. Of course, I'm gonna try all of them, but first, let me actually go ahead and show you what this glow serum looks like on the skin, because there are only two shades and I have them both, so let me just see. Again, $34, squeezy tube, feels very luxe and nice to me. Ooh, 
That is delicious. There is a very fresh scent with this glow serum. I feel like I've smelled it before. It's reminding me of something from either Misha or Airborean or maybe perhaps Solwasu. I'm, I'm getting a very strong sensory association. I, I just can't put my finger on it, but it's definitely reminding me of something. All right, so basically this goes on pretty sheer. Feels a little bit tacky to the touch, but you can't really see the color, but you can definitely see the glow. The glow is there. And now let's try out Juice Boost, which is the bronzing one. I'm gonna put that right underneath just to show you how it first applies on. It definitely has a bit of depth, but it kind of just blurs out into nothing. Again, slightly tacky consistency, but not a problem for me. When I typically try out foundations, I like to use it in a way that I would use it for myself on a daily basis. But because this actually has a primer serum, I think I'm gonna designate this side of the face for this primer serum. And then for the other side of the face, I'm gonna use my Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer just to see if there's a difference. And maybe I'll add a little bit of the serum on top as like a highlighter because it does have a very glowy glass skin-like finish. Yeah, let's do that. But first, let's actually try try out these shades of the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. And by the way, I was also sent a Yummy Skin sweatshirt that I love, it is super cozy. Thank you, Danessa Myricks and team. I love this color. And now, let's get into shades. This is the packaging, very beautiful and bronzy. Interesting, so this actually looks like a glass component, but it's not. This is a squeezy tube. So I love that. You can actually get the most out of this packaging. You could squeeze out the product, literally, to get all of it out. Super, super cool. All right, let's test the shades. So first we've got the shade 6N, which is six neutral, and I'll show you the model that it is associated with. I'm not sure if you're supposed to shake this, but it does say here that this is also a refillable cartridge. So that's really, really cool. I'm gonna shake it up anyway, just cause I want to. And let's go ahead and test the shade. I'm gonna go over my table just so I don't drip this foundation over this beautiful sweatshirt. All right, so this is shade 6N. Wow. There's definitely a scent with this foundation. It almost smells like paint, I'll be honest with you. The coverage looks very full to me, and the consistency feels oily on my fingers. So I don't know if it actually is oily, but that's definitely how it feels. All right, I think this shade might be a pinch light for me. So let's go ahead and try the next one down, which is 7N, and this is the model that's associated with it. Beautiful, okay. 7N is a bit darker, but still very, very close to 6N. The coverage though is promising. Okay, moving on to 9N. This is the model. We skipped 8P. I don't think I'm a pink undertone, so I was not sent that shade, but here we go. 9N, this looks more like it. Yeah, 9N looks really, really good. Pretty good on my neck. Maybe a little bit orangey, but not awful. And the last shade that I'm gonna test out is 10G. So this is the first golden undertone. This is the model associated with it. I guess let's try that here. I think 9N is the closest shade to me. This one is just like a little too golden, but the neutral is close enough, I think. Perhaps I'm someone that needs to mix these two because I'm not exactly like a neutral undertone. I definitely lean a little bit more golden, but this is too golden. So I think I'm gonna go for the 9N. I am intrigued, I am excited, and it's time for a thumbnail face. Danessa Myricks has a foundation? What? Are we excited or are we scared? Do we need a foundation from Danessa Myricks though? That is the question. Hm. I'm giddy. All right, so now I'm gonna remove all of my swatches. I'm gonna start fresh. I don't know, I kind of feel like I can make all of those shades work. Is that weird? So let's go for this glow serum on this side of the face. Should I also use it on the forehead? Yeah, why not? Applying main squeeze, which is the brightening one. Oh, it is just so pretty. If this was ASMR, this would sound really nice right now. All right, I'm gonna use the bronzing one on my forehead. That is very glowy, like glass skin on full blast. Wow, come on, jaw highlight. All right, and then on this side of the face, 
I'm not gonna do anything of the sort. I'm just gonna use this guy right here. Minimize this little zit coming through. Literally such a different effect. This is totally matte. This is so glossy. 9N, here we come. God, I love the squeezy tube. It is just so good. I'm gonna do one section at a time. I'm gonna use this Bobbi Brown foundation brush, full coverage face brush, and I'm gonna see how it blends out this foundation rather well. Interestingly enough, as oily and slippery as this foundation felt on my fingers, it does not feel that way at all when applied over this Yummy Skin Glow Serum slash primer. I almost feel like the primer is gripping the foundation. All right, so I'm curious to see how it applies on this side of the face, but now let's apply it here. I'm trying to be very careful to not splatter. The shade is very nice. Not an exact match, but pretty nice. I definitely think I can make it work. I would say this is more than a medium coverage foundation. This feels pretty full to me. It's covering up everything. And also upon this initial application, it seems pretty forgiving on the pores. Although the finish is very luminous, very dewy. Okay, I'm thinking I'm gonna try 7N just because on camera this looks a little bit saturated, even for my neck. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of 7N on this side. We already know how it applies. The 7N is clearly a lot lighter. Wow. I can't possibly be an 8P. So maybe what I have to do is actually mix those two together. But wow, the coverage is insane. This is a full coverage foundation. On this side of the face, I will say that the coverage looks even fuller considering that I use this tinted primer. And it also feels a little bit more matte, though there's still a lot of luminosity. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use whatever's remaining on this brush and sort of like highlight my points of interest here, like the cheekbone, the jaw, and maybe just a little bit of the forehead, just to see if I can make these two sides of the face match a little bit better. But wow, this side of the face, this side of the face, very, very luminous. I can't say that this foundation feels weightless. I actually do feel like there's product on my face and also the coverage is quite full, fuller than I expected, but let's see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a close up before I apply everything else on, before I seal it with powder. This side of the face, pores. Cheekbone looks like it's made of glass though. Forehead, very reflective. And then this side of the face, not as reflective, but definitely very glassy in the cheekbone area. Not so much everywhere else though. So now I'm gonna add my concealer. I'm gonna use my Fenty Beauty Bright Fix. I've missed it. It's such a great concealer. I actually just recently wore it on the red carpet to the premiere of The Batman. When I saw how great my Getty images turned out to be, I decided this is the concealer for me. Not only does it look great in person, it photographed so nice. Also, speaking of events, I'm so excited that the mask mandates are finally about to be overturned, shall we say. I think as of March 7th, we finally don't have to wear masks indoors in New York City. So that's really amazing. Very excited about that. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because this week was so busy and I had so many events that I went to which kind of went from zero to 100. Not only did I go to like a massive world premiere of a movie, I also went to a really big beauty event for YSL. So I feel like beauty events are also coming back. This is so, so exciting for me because I live in New York and for the past two years, all the events have been happening in LA only. So, but the fact that it's changing, the fact that the masks are coming off and the numbers are down, it's just making me so happy. I don't know about you, but I love events. I love industry events, not just beauty events, but all types of events. Concealer is on. Now let's move on to powder. I'm gonna use my one size for the under eye. Once I've set the face, seems like it also kind of locked in all of that shine. It's definitely not as dewy in those areas where I just applied the powder, which is to be expected. But also, I don't know, I kind of really like the dew in this area. It is just so pretty. Pretty. I'm all about the jawline highlight nowadays. So I'm wondering what I can do to still set the face, but still allow the dew to come through. I'm actually gonna use my Charlotte T, as I always do, surprise, surprise. Wait, before that, before I even set the rest of my face, I'm gonna reach for Danessa Myrick's Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. And I'm gonna go for, not this one. I'm gonna go for <laughs> this one right here. And perhaps this lighter shade, looks like a caramel. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of that right here. Honestly, maybe that was not the best shade because I don't really see it 
too much on my skin, maybe just a little bit. It's like almost the color of my skin. Let me go a little bit deeper. Yeah, okay, the second one. Oh yeah, nice. And now I'm gonna go for my Charlotte Tea powder and I'm gonna set the rest of my face. First, I'm gonna set the forehead very lightly so I could still see a little bit of that dew coming through. And then I'm gonna set that very wet looking jaw. Holy shit, that is a wet looking jaw. Wow. Let's see, I'm gonna try to do it this way so you could really appreciate what I'm doing. Well, that did it. I don't know, it still kept a little bit of the shine, at least on my cheekbone. The face still feels a little bit sticky. It still feels a little bit wet to the touch, even my forehead. So I'm not sure if I like that. And I guess that's why it also feels like I have product on my skin. But I gotta say, in my mirror and in my monitor, the skin looks absolutely flawless. Also, I will go as far as saying that I wouldn't call this a skin-like finish. In fact, I would call this a very glam finish. Not that this looks like makeup. It looks very, very beautiful and not heavy at all, but it feels for sure a bit heavier than I'm used to, heavier than I was expecting and it definitely leans more glam than natural. Yeah, that's the best way I could put it upon my first impression. Ooh, I just found Ferrero Rocher on my table. Mmm, childhood fave. All right, and now time for a close-up. Is it glam looking or what? Is it full coverage looking or what? Here's the dew. Even though there's plenty of powder on the skin, the dew is still coming through. Here's the forehead and here's this side of the face. Plenty of dew remaining, but the coverage is high and I am so close to the face. Wow. You can definitely still see my pores. I always find that with my skin type, fuller coverage foundations tend to emphasize my pores just a little bit, but Overall, and from far away, the skin looks insane. And by that, I mean insane good. So although this looks good, I can't say that it feels good. It feels just a little bit mask-like to me. I honestly wish I had my brother and sister here so that they can judge it. Let's call him the swatch model. Well, while we wait for him, I thought this might be a good opportunity for me to um, thank all of you who are subscribed to my channel. You guys have been with me. I really appreciate it. If you also follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, then you see what I do outside of just reviewing makeup. And thank you so much for doing that. If you aren't already subscribed to me, if you don't already follow me on my other channels, now's your chance to do so. So go ahead and hit that button. Cause you've made it this far in this video and it's that time, okay? And now where's the swatch model? So, what do you think of my foundation? For a standout, I mm -hmm. love the shade. Mm. I think the shade really complements you because sometimes a lot of the shades make you lighter than your actual tone. This one to me works with your highlights and your mid-tones in a nice way. Mm. You mean like I just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's pretty cool. You like it? Yeah. What do you think of the face? I think it's good. I would have liked to see it without the highlighter. Oh, that's not a highlighter, honey. That's not a highlighter? No. That's your natural? Your natural? That, <laughs> that is the foundation, darling. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else? Is that, a, is that a bronzer or like a... It's basically the foundation, two shades of foundation, and I have this serum underneath and a little bit of this cream blush. Blush? Mm-hmm. Wow. What do you think? Honestly, I mean, I think it looks really, really good. Yeah? Yeah. Do you like the full coverage? Well, that, it doesn't scream full coverage. Really? That's what I like about it. I don't know, I'm not really good at this, I, you know, in the terminology, but I would say it looks normal. Really? That's what I like about it. It doesn't scream, I'm buildable and sheer. It doesn't scream, I'm now tan. It's just me, to me, I feel like I'm enjoying your natural features. Hmm, I like I that. Which I like a lot. Because I think what it does is it actually makes you look very beautiful without trying so hard. Thank you. Serious. Hmm. I hope that explains. Made me look beautiful. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your input. <laughs> so that was the opinion of the swatch model. I guess he thinks it looks pretty flawless, but not super makeup-y. I will say the skin looks really, really good. It doesn't feel as good as it could feel, meaning that it definitely feels like I have product on the face, but I've already mentioned that several times, but it definitely does look really nice on camera and apparently also in person. 
The most important question is, how does it actually wear? Can it withstand my oils? What will it look like at the end of the day? So now, well, let's find out. Let's cue in that good old time warping music and cue in that wear test. Let's go. All right, here we are. It has been seven hours of wear for this Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. And this is what my face is looking like at the end of it. Hmm. Zooming on in, I gotta say that it is a little too oily, a pinch too greasy for my liking, but from a distance, it still looks very pretty when it comes to coverage. So I'm gonna zoom on in and show you what my pores look like when I tilt my head towards the light. You can kind of see how everything looks a little bit thick, like a little bit heavy, like a layer on my skin. This side of the face is very similar. There's a little bit of separation here around the nose. Same thing on this side. This is the forehead looking pretty glassy, but more greasy. I guess what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I sadly don't think that this serum foundation is meant for my oily AF skin. Although it has very good coverage, more than medium, I would consider this a full coverage foundation. Although it does look really pretty on the skin, it looks natural, especially when it's first applied. Something about it feels really heavy. And I said this before, I really like the way that the foundation looks. I don't like the way that it feels. So you guys know I have cats. I am a cat mom. So in these past few hours, I have been spending time at home. I've been cuddling with my cats and I feel like there is cat hair just stuck to my entire face. I am feeling it all over, probably because this foundation is just a little bit too tacky. Even though I've set it with powder, even though I've added other products to it, there's just a stickiness that I can't seem to get behind. It's not my preference. And moreover, it's not something that feels good to me. Granted, I am gonna grab a tissue. I'm gonna blot right now for the first time. I'm gonna see what happens if I blot off all of this shine and grease. Honestly, that did it. That looks really nice. I feel like that reset everything. So I honestly feel like I could still probably make this foundation work for me if I use a lot less product. I also said that full coverage is not something that I'm reaching for a lot nowadays. I prefer a much more natural type of coverage. So with this, even though I used a tiny drop of product on each part of my face, I feel like I could use even less. Like half the product would give me enough coverage and perhaps not feel as heavy, not as sticky, not as greasy on my skin as it does right now at the moment. So my first impressions verdict is the following. Does this product give me really great coverage? Yes, absolutely. Does it look really good on the skin upon first application? Yes, it does. In fact, I wasn't the only one who liked it. I brought in Lee and he liked it as well. He said that it looked really natural. He loved the color. He loved the finish and he had nothing negative to say actually. But things that I did not like about it is the way that it felt very heavy. I did not like the way that it wore, even though after blotting, it still looks pretty good. It doesn't feel amazing. So I'm definitely going to give it another run. I'm going to use less product next time, but for now, I'm going to stick to this first impressions verdict. So stay tuned for that faves X fails. There will be a lot of foundation discussion in this one. All right, you guys, I am out. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. Check out more videos over here and I will see you in my next one. Peace.